Okay, my love. So today we are going to do a case on Mara Murray. Mara Murray. <laughs> I have a hard time saying her name. I do, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do her case, okay? So this is a, um, a woman that went missing in February. And this is a, a rather old um, cold case. She went missing on February the 13th, 2004. She had done some like suspicious things before she went missing, okay? She had called into work, said there was a death in the family when there, when there wasn't a death in the family. Her car was, um, you know, I think her and her father are in the process of getting her a new car, but the car that she was driving at the time was not reliable, okay? But she decided to take a trip. She decided to, I think she was headed to New Hampshire, okay? So, on the way there, she does stop by the ATM, and I think she does buy some alcohol, things like that, and she, you know, headed on her way. So, I wanted to get in her energy and find out what exactly was going on, you know, within her energy and why she felt the need to, um and fabricate that story or to, you know, feel the need to get away. And that's exactly what she was in the energy in. She was in the energy of just wanting to get away. She was. Um, I feel like she felt like she was overwhelmed and she had a lot on her plate and um, just some things that happened. I think she had wrecked her, her father's car or something at the time. She was in nursing school. She did have a boyfriend things like that, and I feel like she was just overwhelmed, and she just needed um, some me time, you know, to figure out life, you know, so, but I I can attest to that, you know, it happens, we, we go through, we go through things like that, where you just need to get away, you just need some time to think, okay, so I feel like that's where uh, the energy that Mara was in, okay, so... On her way to New Hampshire, she does stop at the ATM. She gets out some money, and she, she, you know, is on her way. She buys alcohol. She's on her way. Now, I am paraphrasing because I don't know, you know, exact moments, times, and things like that of her case. Um, but I do know enough to talk to her spirit and my guides to figure out or try to figure out exactly you know, what happened to her. And I guess I should say now that this is for entertainment purposes only, okay? Nothing that I'm saying is what you would consider factual. If this does it, I'm not trying to offend anybody or to hurt anybody or the families of anyone. If anything, I'm trying to heal, okay? So if this is not your thing, feel free to click off. You do not have to watch me. But I hope you do, and I hope that you decide to help. Because it only takes one person to hear the message and to pass it on to, again, have that aha moment. And um, maybe something will click or resonate or send someone in the right direction. Now, this is an old case. This is an older case, okay? So, what I can say about this is Mara was in an accident. It was... A single car accident she ran off the road and damaged her car I do know shortly after that someone a, a gentleman stopped by asked if she needed help and she declined his offer okay she and I believe it happened right after because I asked her why why did you decline his offer and from what I got was it was, it just had happened. I think she was trying to, you know, gather herself together and um, just figure out herself what she, was, what she was going to do, decide what she needed to do, who she was going to call and all that. But she um, told the man that offered assistance that she had already called AAA and they were on their way and he, you know, he said, okay, and he left. Okay. And then I do believe that there was an eyewitness that seen her walking down the road. And that was the last time that Mara was ever seen again, okay? So what really gets me about this case is Mara's father. He, 
just watching him on TV, he's so heartbroken over losing his daughter and not knowing what happened to her. I can't imagine going through that, uh, nor do I want to. And my heart always goes out to the family and the loved ones of um, the cases that I work on. And um, in this case with Mara, her father, there is something to do, uh, something to do with a promise. Um, she's wanting to send that message to her father that she recognizes a promise, either um, a promise that her father had made to her or she had made to her father, but um, she is definitely recognizing that, okay? So what I'm getting from what happened to her was, I do believe that someone has seen her get in an accident, okay? I don't believe that they offered assistance at that time. I do believe that this person watched her for a little bit. And um, when she decided to start walking, I believe she was took. She was just kidnapped from what I'm gathering from Mara was um, this person came out of nowhere and just grabbed her. And um, she did not know this person. She had never seen this person. And he just took her. Okay, and, it, it, and it's a male. Okay, a male energy took, took her. I get that he was a rather big man. He was, um, you know, just a big person. She described him as a big person, big hands. He was tall. He was bigger, okay? Um, somewhat muscular. I also get that most people would consider him attractive. Um, they also know would know him to be very loud. And he's got like a, a really full face, okay? And um, a, a mustache at the time, okay? And she explained he was really tall and he was really tall and he had dark eyes and that was verified twice that he had dark eyes and he had tan skin and that was verified twice as well that his his skin um, is tan. I also got that um, she kept saying serial killer, serial killer. So this is someone that had killed before and and or has killed after all in the same killed before killed after he, he's a serial killer someone that was tall long legs just big okay I got that um, he has animals which makes sense because when she was telling me that he has animals she I, I'm, I was asking her trying to figure out where she was because she has crossed over okay um, she is no longer with us um, in this realm but she is on the other side so I wanted to know where her remains would be and so what I got was on farmland near a barn on farmland and she was underground so it makes sense that this person would have animals and things like that and and possible that he lives on a farm or has connections to a farm or a farmhouse okay he um, has been mar married and or is married he also comes across as very reliable very stable he is also a very jealous person he does have children he comes off as someone that has a really big heart, like, you know, oh, he's just a big teddy bear, okay? He's just a big teddy bear, big heart, whatever, but he's, he's, he, okay, no, all right, I'm not even going to go there, okay, anyway, so, it, again, he says to himself a lot, but when he talks, he talks loud, okay? He has a dislike for children, but he has children, so if you know someone that, um, 
you know, has children, but they're not very good to their children or, you know, just really doesn't have anything to do with their children. I mean, you know, and all this other stuff, you know, take all this into effect, okay? Um, you can't just start pointing fingers at everybody. This is just, you know, around that time, back in 2004, in the area of New Hampshire, you know, could this guy... Could, could you possibly know this guy? Does this guy sound familiar when I'm speaking? Okay. Now, I do get that this guy has or comes from money, but they, well, actually, he has money, but he has had his um, fair share of hard times, okay? So, I, I get that he's worked for what, for what he has. I get that he's very serious, and he loves being outdoors, but he's a very serious person. And this, he could also have water and air in his chart. I got water and strong air in his chart, okay? He does hold a lot of anger within him. And she did say, again, he just took me. Now, he did not kill her right away. He did keep her for some time. And it was sexually... Um, driven and again if this is too much because i know this energy can be heavy and if it's too much you know feel free to click off and 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 enjoy something else okay this is just you know to possibly help the family or to send someone on the right track but i'm getting a vision of him actually seeing the accident and and not making any moves. He he kind of waited. Okay. He waited for for the right moment. And uh, she said he just came out of nowhere. More than one person could be involved. But I don't think that they more than one person was involved in the abduction. I believe it was one person that abducted her later on because I don't believe she was killed right away more than one person was involved in that scenario. So I asked how she passed and she said um, choking, but um, she did explain that that is how she passed and um, she was actually killed in this person's bedroom, okay? So she was killed in this person's house. She was killed in this person's bed. And um, then she was took and she was buried. And Mara did explain that her killer at the time of her killing, um, that her killer was between the ages of 40 and 50. So she did verify that he was between the ages of 40 to 50 years old. Mara really wanted me to point out the fact that she had, she had some jealous friends or something to do with friends. Um, she had jealous friends, envious friends, you know, things like that. And you know, I, I just heard my, my friends were envious of me. So I don't know if she just wanted to to validate that or to just say that or make that known, but um, she most definitely did. I don't know if it has anything to do with what happened to her um, because outside of that, I didn't get any other clues that, you know, this has anything to do with her friends. But she did want to point that out that that um, her friends were envious of her. And this this man that took Mara's life was a sexual predator. He did it for sexual gratification. Uh, he did, and he's a, a very sick individual. This was not his first time, nor was it his last. But um, I do feel that 
wherever he's at, this realm or the other, he is confined um, to where he can't hurt anybody anymore. So that's that's wonderful, right? So either he's in jail, okay, and um, he can't hurt anyone now, or he has passed over and he for sure can't hurt anyone there, okay? So I love you guys. Thanks for helping. Please like, share, and subscribe. You know, get this channel out there. I'm new, and the only way it's going to get circulating is if you um, hit the like button and subscribe and do all that good stuff. And like I said, if this isn't your thing, there's plenty of other things that I do that I'm sure you will enjoy. And as always, I'm sending love to you. And don't forget to love yourself and each other. And I will see you guys later. Bye.